In this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits and GD match of an early Iron Age Israelite from Israel. He's got JY DNA and K1A mitochondrial DNA. This is his predicted phenotype. According to Nashakot, he's got dark brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. According to Snipper Free, he's got brown color eyes, brown hair actually and white skin. Um, YSEC is also predicting him to have brown color hair, as you can see here. So that's a disagreement between YSEC and Minus Akot. And um, does not have BH1, no blue eye haplotype 1, which also means none of the other blue eye haplotypes that follow. So no BH2, no BH3, no BH4. He's got some darker variants in SLC45A2, IRF4, and tear genes. And he's also got some lighter variants in the SLC24A4 gene. He's got uh, this very exotic genotype that basically increases the risk of balding by seven times. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. And he's got this genotype in MC1R gene, which increases response to anesthetics and uh, increases the likelihood of having red hair and melanoma. What's sort of surprising is that he's got the European no-go learner mutation. In fact, he's homozygous for it. It's a pretty stereotypically European result and you would not expect a uh, person from West Asia to have two draft variants here. He's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2, uh, which is a typical human um, typical human, human genotype, more dopamine D2 receptors, less likelihood of ADHD and Parkinson's. And he's got uh, heterozygous calls in the warrior gene, which is Comte's Valmet variation. He's Valmet here, which means intermediate levels of dopamine. Once again, a pretty typical uh, genotype for a European. He does not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits. Uh, no shovel-shaped incisors and epicanthic folds, and uh, he does not have the mutation that protects against myopia, which means he might have been myopic, might have needed glasses to see in the distance. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a super high risk score for multiple sclerosis, an average risk score for coronary heart disease, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, he's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, he's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a very low risk score for Crohn's disease. Um, he's got an average risk score for prostate carcinoma. And he's got a low risk score for asthma. And this is what he scores with Eugene's K13 on GD match. Uh, actually a pretty typical result for anybody from the Levant. Not even Southern, not even all that Southern, because there is only 2% Northeast African and there is no Sub-Saharan here. Uh, there is only 18% Red Sea, so yeah, it's it's very much a North uh, kind of Levant result. He's closest to Palestinians and Samaritans, followed by Lebanese Christians. And um, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Lebanese Muslim plus Yemeni Jewish or Yebani Lebanese Christian plus Yemeni Jewish, uh, a mixture of Lebanese Christians and some kind of Arab, Arab uh, Peninsula Jews. And this is what we see here with um, G25 as well. We see he's getting modeled as a mixture of Samaritan plus some kind of uh, Arab Arabic Peninsula Jew. And this is what he scores with MDLPK16. The majority of his ancestry here is Caucasian, which on this calculator does not seem to represent Caucasus hunter-gatherers. Don't confuse those two. Rather, it means some kind of a modern West Asian group. And he is closest to Arabs from Israel here, followed by Lebanese Christians. He's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Samaritan plus Jewish from Iraq or Samaritan plus Jewish from Iran, which is similar to what you've seen with G25. This is what he scores with Harappa World. The majority of his ancestry here is once again Caucasian, followed by Southwest Asian, followed by Mediterranean, finally followed by Baloch. Baloch here represents uh, Iranian Neolithic farmers and Caucasus hunter-gatherers, so he's got at least 10% Iranian Neolithic ancestry. And with PUT-DNA LK12, this is what he scores. He's scoring 31% Caucasus hunter-gatherer, uh, which I think if you break it down into Caucasus and Iranian Neolithic, is going to be maybe 20% Iranian Neolithic and 10% Caucasus in actuality. But it is 31% uh, Caucasus or West Asian-like ancestry. He is closest to Palestinians here, followed by Syrians. And he can be modeled as a mixture of Yemenite Jewish plus Eastern Turks, or Palestinians plus Druzia, or Palestinians plus... Iraqi Jews. So it's a very Jewish result. Um, extremely Jewish result, actually. <laughs> this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gidrosia calculators. He is only scoring 57% Natufian, 
But that's because actual Natufians don't score 100% Natufians. Actual Natufians here score like 75 to 80% Natufians, so that's why. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Bronze Age 11 plus Step in Neolithic, or Bronze Age 11 plus Step Early Middle Bronze Age. And with Gedrosia K3, this is what he's scoring. He's scoring 88% West Eurasian, uh, and the rest is Sub-Saharan African and East Asian. Uh, the Sub-Saharan African that he's scoring is all due to affinities between people like Natufians, pre portally Neolithic Levant with Sub-Saharan Africans. It's not due to actual Sub-Saharan African admixture, as you've seen with previous calculators. He's only scoring 2% Northeast African, and he's not even scoring anything from the Sub-Saharan region. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content and also you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description.